Hi, this is Dee from Sorcery Soap, and I wanted to talk to you um, about a couple things today. Well, first of all, in this whole video, hopefully, um, I'm going to show you how to make some soap dough embeds that run the length of the, the loaf of soap so that you can place them inside. I've shown videos before, but I hadn't pointed it out. And um, that way, when you slice your bars of soap, that you get the same design inside every single time. So I want to show you how to do that. And I wanted to show you a little hack that I created for myself because um, there's a soap right now. Well, it's been out for quite a while, but it looks like that uh, there's a raindrop injected into the soap and it runs the length of the soap or so I assume. And I looked around and I couldn't find any real good tutorials about it. And there was one and it was translated and I missed a couple pieces of it. And I tried it and tried it. And what I did with um, the soap itself to try, and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like that. This is what I'm talking about, where you have little drops of color inside the soap. And so what I did initially was split my batter and make a couple different colors. And then I took an eyedropper and injected it in, but I couldn't quite figure out where I was going to cut the soap. And so I did a lot of work for really no good value because it didn't, you know, you wear the bar away and you have this one little drop of soap and deep in the bar of the soap and you may or may not ever see it. So I missed it, but I did successfully do it a couple times and it's just a lot of work. And I thought there's got to be a better way to do this, or at least one that I enjoy doing and that I have like my effort has a great deal more reward in the other end of it <laughs> because I don't really like to do things that don't have much reward. Um, but that's, that's not entirely true, but whatever, let's leave that as it is. But for those of you who don't know, um, soap dough is cold processed soap that's made with a particular type of recipe, a balance of hard and soft oils, and the water is kept in it. Unlike traditional cold process soap, we soap makers want to get the water out of it. And the water is used to carry the lye to mix and adhere to um, all the oils and butters that we make soap with. And we want that water to evaporate for a lot of different reasons. Um, That's the weirdest thing. My Siri just turns on randomly. Siri, be quiet. Siri, go to sleep. Anyway, so, um, where was I? Uh, so soap dough, water and lye are mixed together when you're making homemade or handcrafted soap. Uh, to you use the water to get the lye to attach to all the oil and butter uh, molecules and we want the water to evaporate because it makes a hard bar of soap and for weighing purposes you can't weigh a bar of soap that has water in it when the water is going to evaporate because you could weigh it at five ounces and then you end up with four and three quarter ounces at the end of the six or eight week curing time or however long and that's not accurate because soap dough soap makers ha have to put their weights on their bars. Anyway, so what I discovered, one of the reasons I decided to use soap dough was, well, I, it doesn't matter, it's a long story, but the short version is, is that um, because I didn't want to spend a ton of money on molds, which I ended up doing anyway, but I wanted to be able to have more freedom to be able to create what I wanted to create. And so I found a process to um, make cold processed soap with this particular couple different recipes. I have a couple books out that have recipes and I've tested them over and over again so that it comes out exactly the way I prefer it, which is like this. It's really nice and smooth. This is called Twisted Berry, by the way, and it is on the website. I think there's some bars left. And it feels like clay. I don't want any lumps in it. I don't want it to be sticky. I just want it to be like this so I can push it into molds or do what I want with it. Anyway, this is cold processed soap that his, the curing process has been thwarted or suppressed. Um, so we want to keep the water in it so that we can keep breaking up that crystalline structure. And then when you make this, 
into the shape that you want, you just leave it to cure, which means for the water to evaporate and it'll get hard. And I could wash with this right now, no problem. It'll create bubbles. Weird, but it is true. And then I can make it into any little shape that I want and put it on my soaps. And you can, you know, I've been working with the process of sticking embellishments on soap after I've made the full bar, cut it, and then I stick it on with water. And that'll cure and become hard. So there you go. Anyway, hopefully that little like short version of what soap dough is explains it a bit. Um, perfectly safe to touch, perfectly safe to wash with. So here's the thing. So I wanted, like, here's a bar of soap. I wanted to use all the dimensions. I didn't use these sides, obviously, but I wanted to use this and I wanted to use the top so that there's sort of an illusion, like how did that and that, like, how is that? And then when you wash, this heart goes all the way through the bar of soap so that it's e even, like the, the whole design of the soap is going to stay the way it is for the life of the soap. So anyway, those things, those odd things fascinate me. And I wanted to show you a couple things on how that works. So there's a couple ways to make these embellishments or embeds for cold processed soap dough. And one of them is this handy device. Um, sorry, there's a, okay. So this device is called a clay extruder. And you can find them on Amazon for like $10. I have two of them and I probably should have more than that. But um, this, this red one, and I, I don't know if it's the manufacturing or the company or whatever, but this red one spins like really easily in and out of the tube. My green one's really sticky and I don't really care for that, but whatever, because it, it makes it a lot harder. So it comes with a variety of these little discs. And this is what we're going to make right here. And this is a little wonky and wiggly and it's probably hard to see. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. So this one's been curing for a while and it's really kind of hard to see. Let me, so here we go. This is a little better. Okay. So if you can see that, oh, there's a little there. It's the range, it's the raindrop shape, like in here. So this was made with an extruder, and it's okay that it's wiggly like that. It's really hard to get them straight, especially when the soap dough is soft. This is obviously cured a bit, so it's a little harder and firmer. And then you know you pour your soap in when you make your cold process soap and you drop these in. And it's a delicate process because they will spin when you pour more soap on top of it if you're um, just going to pour it on top, but you have to be really careful and put a spoon in. Um, anyway, I just like how tiny they are. And let's see here. So that is the shape we're going to make right there. Seems bigger somehow. more of this. And I noticed the other day, which I thought was really weird, I was looking at my videos, just trying to learn more and see if, you know, I find it incredibly irritating when I'm out of frame and, you know, I'm doing these by myself, so it's not, I have to stop and look and it's, it's a tedious process. And I'm not complaining by any stretch. I'm not complaining because I'm really glad to help. I don't want to come off as trying to complain. I'm just telling you the fact of it. And I'll go through this whole thing, make this entire video, I'll make this entire video and my camera will just randomly shut off just like it just did. Or, and then I'll keep talking for like 15 more minutes. No idea that my camera just shut off or that I'm out of frame or, uh, a variety of things. There's just a host of things that can go sideways, particularly like me behind the camera taking stills, way happier. Even behind the video camera now, I'm way happier. Never used to like to do video stuff at all. 
And but doing it for myself, you got to spin a lot of plates at the same time, it seems like. And I don't know how anybody else does it, but I find it a little bit frustrating. So, so you see how easily this just breaks up and it's pretty cold in here today. It's rainy and cold and gloomy and overcast and I'm very pleased with the day. <laughs> so, okay. So there's that. Okay. And if there's any breaks in your little soap sausage that you put inside of here, it'll cause the break when you extrude it. So let's just see. Okay. So I made this, by the way, this is a handy little device. This is as long as my loaf, my uh, silicone, silicone loaf mold. So I don't want it longer than this. And these are right angles. Can you believe it took me, it seemed like a hundred years to get somebody to understand what I was asking. I said I wanted a piece of right angle. Um, what did I call it? I called it right angle. Um, Oh, I can't think what I called it right now, but I did tell him what I wanted. Uh, trim. That's what I said. I wanted a piece of right angle trim. Do you, would you happen to know where I could get that? And they looked at me like I had three heads. I'm like, yeah, this is Home Depot. I know what right angle trim is. How is it that you don't know what right angle trim is? So eventually, after asking, I think, five people and running all over the flipping store, I finally got what I wanted. And I think it was a couple dollars. They cut it for me for free and I got a whole bunch of these and that's exactly what I wanted because it helps with a lot of um, embeds that I put inside for different shapes and whatnot. Anyway, um, this is one of the reasons why I do soap toe because I'll do anything to use to leverage my creative ability over purchase. I just think I don't want a lot of stuff in my house. I don't. I, it, I just think I have more, sometimes more creative ability than sense, but yeah, mostly more time than money, honestly. So you see how it comes out? This is coming out really nice. Now, if you have another person, you could have them hold this because if you can hold it, it won't, it won't get squirrely like that. So let's see. And if you could do it in really smooth motion. See, this is really key to having such great soap dough because that other, the yellow soap dough, I was using it to use it up because it gelled and it got lumps in it and it was just a pain, but I just had the hardest time. such a good color. I had the hardest time throwing it out. So... And if it's a little bumpy like this, it's not gonna matter. You're not, you're not even gonna see it. This is like, you see how bumpy this is right here and how uneven it is? It came out in here perfect. Except for this guy got turned. Kind of broke the illusion because I really wanted people to think that I injected it or did that magic thing that everybody else does and I have no clue how they really do it. Let me know if you know how to do it or you know of a link somewhere, let me know. Not that I'll probably do it, but anyway. So there you go, like that, and then you just set it down in your little mold thing and leave it. And then it becomes stiff. And even if it breaks, because mine broke, a couple of mine broke, you can lay them down next to each other so that they will be, you know, consecutively long and you won't, it, it won't be such a big deal. So there's room for error if you, if you screw it up a bit. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Here's another way and Gosh, I was going to look this up and I completely forgot. I think Debbie Olson did this first or she at least brought it up and it, it came to my attention. And she's using cookie cutters to put 
um, soap embellishments or soap embeds inside of soap. I think she's the one that did. I don't remember. Somebody did a soap challenge or something and I saw it and I asked and I was like, wow, that's brilliant. How did I miss that one? And anyway, so I made one with a cat inside. This is how, this is how that worked out. This is how I did it. I'll show you. And this one's a little bit more tedious, but super worth it. And oftentimes what I'll do, because I like to do tedious things, well, anyway, so I like to do tedious things and, um, I'll just like play something on my computer and sit here and make these all day. I'm not even kidding. Like that's what I do. It's the only task I give myself for the day. And I just do that. Like today, not the only task. I have a lot of things to do, but, and this is one of them. I think that's part of my frustration because I have this laundry list of stuff that I need to get done. And then things kind of start to go sideways and take way longer than I wanted them to. But that's silly. That's just a silly thought process. Because it just takes what it takes. So you can see my fingers have soap on them and it's starting to make it sticky. So if you get embellishments that you're making and they're starting to get sticky on you, I have to tell you, I wash my hands a lot when I'm doing this because your hands that are really clean, the oils and the soap and everything that sticks to your hands as you're doing this make it even more sticky. And I don't like sticky anything. So I wash my hands a lot and I spray with alcohol, which causes my fingers to crack. Sorry. It does like in the winter time because the alcohol is super drying, but I also paint with water to get all the like soap crumbs off so that they look really smooth okay so there we go so you want mostly all the cracks out of it you don't want to do this with cracks so starting out with a nice flat piece right okay so I'm gonna have to use a little a little cornstarch, just a little bit, because we don't want to over cornstarch it, otherwise it won't, won't be able to stick. Well, I, I know how to, I mean, I'll show you how to do that. Here we go. Anyway. Okay. So even this is probably too thick. Yeah. I mean, not thick. Not, not thick enough. So, I don't remember where I got these, but I looked these up, because I went through, like, like a ton of the little plastic ones. And I finally found some metal ones that I really like. Okay, so there's that. Okay. A little bit of water, just a touch of water, and then stick these together. And again, these don't have to be exactly perfect, but they definitely need to be stuck together. And you can clean them up. Oh, great. You see that? I'm throwing this out. I've washed that silly brush like a million times and I can't get that brown mica out of there. That's one thing I go through a ton of paint brushes. I think I have another brush here. I do. Okay. I just went to Michael's the other day just to get paint brushes because of that very issue. I get it's probably more like not mica but oxide because mica's wash out pretty well, but I must have painted something with it with brown. So and then I use this to smooth the edges over. It's just water. Lots of times people ask me, what am I spraying with? This is 91% rubbing alcohol and this is water. No, it's brown water because I contaminated my water. Okay. So. Since I'm using an example anyway. So you just want them to stick. Now, here's the other thing too that I learned the other day while I was making those heart soaps. 
they might break apart when you're going to put them in or spin. So having a pair of chopsticks on hand is really helpful. And then even, I didn't want a line in my soap, so I wanted it all liquid to look like that. I didn't want any lines in it. I just wanted this to look like it's hovering. And I really wanted to promote the question of how did you get that in there? Like how? That's all I really wanted. And you know, sometimes I just, this is one of my favorite soaps. I call it friendship soap. It's just one of my favorite soap designs. I have another one like this I put a heart in. The hearts aren't, aren't, aren't as nice. See how nice and crisp that is? I hand molded those and it's not near as nice. But um, I usually have one of these bars in my shower all the times. And this whole, um, I did a yellow one, a green one, green this horse green. I have that soap dough on the internet or on the website too. And then this one, and they're all rain scents. So I used Coastal Rain by Brambleberry. Love it. Turns a little yellow, brown, but I still love it. Um, sea Salt and Driftwood by Wholesale Supply Plus. Kentish Rain, again, Wholesale Supply Plus, and First Rain. And those are some of my favorite. Brambleberry has amazing um, Pacific, let's see, what is it? Pacific, can't remember the other part of that fragrance oil, but anyway, Brambleberry has a series of rain fragrance oils too. And one of the reasons I like rain fragrance oils is because they behave so nicely and I don't have to worry about them going sideways. Mostly they don't discolor and rarely accelerate. I've not had any accelerate on me. So um, anyway, so you can see why I say this is tedious because I, I sat here and made rainforest green, yellow, pink, and all my raindrops. And this is just what I did all day. So anyway. And when, and when the soap dough is wet, it doesn't, you don't always need water, but I do paint over top of it with water so that I know that it sticks. And see how it sort of tears? When you don't use saran wrap on top of the soap dough to get that clean, see how it gets munged up right there? Well, it will um, tear that soap like that. It's not a clean clean cut and I don't mind it is actually helpful when I'm making these so see these aren't sticking very well so and again they don't have to be exactly perfect ideally they you know if you want to get them all lined up that's better than these little cuts in them and you can make the soap dough thicker too I just did it for this reason so it doesn't take quite as long see I made these a little thicker it's pretty thick but then it like takes its toll on the shape. So anyway, it's tricky business. It's not an easy task, that's for sure. But if you're interested in doing it like that, and right now it's a little too sticky for me. I'm going to try to smooth them down. This is largely unnecessary, but I like it all to be, you know, just in case somebody examines my work. I think it helps to make these little hearts connect to each other too. So, I don't know how you can see, there you go. Wow, that's such a nice color. This Twisted Berry, by the way, is from Nurture Soap Supply, and uh, it's a mica, and it is like a sort of a purpley pink, and it I, it's like so yummy. I want to find reasons to use it. So this video is going on pretty long and I think we've spent enough time together, although I had lots of other plans because I had a whole bunch of other soap here ready to show you some things. But I think that you get the general idea about this. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. And I really appreciate the positive comments because, well, 
and i hate to even mention it because i'd like to leave you on a nice note but i don't know for people that aren't that don't do videos or don't put things up you, it's the more stuff like you think that there's a percentage of people that will always be nasty just always they cannot help themselves apparently and they have nothing good to say about anything and they insist on bringing you into their nastiness and I'm not the only one that talks about this lots of people who get a lot more traffic than I do and on their comments and stuff so you know I do my best to ignore all that stuff and just keep forging on but what I wanted to say is it shouldn't have to be this way but in part that's why I love the positive comments because everybody could go sideways everybody has a bad day and everybody could write something and just be snarky and nasty and just spew venom and the soap witches that follow and comment ask good questions and stuff like that you guys are awesome you just make my day some days i'm kind of having a dreary day and don't know really where i want to go with my day and i look on there and you've made some really nice comment about something that i've shared with you and that super helps i mean it just helps it builds on and makes me feel like you know i'm not living in a little vacuum of hate spewing people because <laughs> i don't spew hate i was just like I don't, I don't get it. I didn't, I didn't do anything mean to you. I actually tried to help you. And so anyway, I'm kind of rambling now, but I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate it. I really appreciate every lovely comment and particularly when it's sincere. And when you're, when you're like thinking about something and you go, you know what, that little thing that you said really helped. Cause I try to do that to other people too. And that I, I don't know, it makes me feel good and it feels better than, and even if it's just a, you know, like you're in the middle of something and you're caught up doing it and you don't have time for formality or for manners or politeness or anything. You're just like, what is it? What is this? And you want your answer right away. I understand that. I understand that. And I don't even get upset by like those sort of curt emails that I get. I, I really don't, especially if they're thoughtful and they really have a valuable question in them. I don't get upset. So my upset level is pretty okay. You know, I mean, like I, I try to like manage it, but I don't know. So I don't know if I'll leave this in, but I just wanted you to hear that. So thank you for watching. And I'm super grateful that you're following and that you're interested in soap dough or my version of soap. And like and subscribe if you want. Hit the little bell button so you get a notification when I put a video up because I'm getting better at doing videos and I'm hopefully giving you more helpful information. So that's all I know for now. Thanks, you guys. Bye.